Hey, I'm Ben and this is Fair Cement House Build Part 16. So French drains have a pretty bad rap because they fail so frequently. But the reason why most French drains fail is because they're trying to deal with surface water. They have grates on top of, of the grade where surface water bringing, you know, leaves and, and sediment and stuff flows into it and clogs up the pipes. So what we're trying to build today is a, you know, a long-term drainage solution that deals with groundwater. And so let's say this is your wall and your French drain is down here, right? What you're trying to deal with is the rising groundwater table. Once it gets to a certain point, it goes to the French drain and then it drains with gravity down below grade because this house is built into a hill. So, and so we have, have all the underground you know, water flow that, that goes all the way up the hill for, I don't know, maybe, maybe a mile it keeps going uphill until it hits like a, a flat section. It's just a low grade hill the whole way. So there can be quite a bit of you know, water transport underground. And that's what, what we're hoping to uh, deal with this. We don't want the water level to go up so high uh, that, that our house is, is underneath the water level during the rainy season and we get you know uh, intrusion of water into our living situation but anyways let's just start the video what i got is a uh, drain pipe which is a perforated three slots per uh, per ridge double wall drain pipe and i got my gravel and then i also have my uh What's this called? This is a non-woven geotextile filter fabric. So the scope of my work is I've built this retaining wall, a lower retaining wall, then we have this upper retaining wall. And I have a drain pipe that comes in to the bottom over here. I have dug it out and run my French drain right over here to my high point. And now I'm extending it this way where it will drain uh, at a lower point over there. So we have the high point in it uh, right here and it drains both directions around the wall. So this is the back of the upper retaining wall and down there in the catacombs where I'm making my connection. So now in the catacombs we're looking at the lower wall right here, the upper wall right there. And I have my trench which is going below the grade of the uh, courtyard soil and here's the drain pipe for this end you want to come around do a 90 connect into a 90 to the existing French drain that uh, drains below the slab of the ferro cement dome what I'm doing is called a burrito wrap so I have uh, I have my my aggregate a pretty coarse rock wrapped completely bottom sides and top in the geotextile non-woven fabric. And then you can see over there I have a sock on a PVC drain pipe, a uh, you know, perforated pipe, you know, two holes on the bottom going to that, that 90 there. What I'm using on the extension of this French drain is pea gravel. Just because I have a local source for it that is uh, dirt cheap. I'm getting my pea gravel from a trailer washout, so it's not real clean, but it's very cheap. They, you know, they filled me up, and I drove home uh, on the back roads, on the bump stops, you know, 10, 10 bucks. So there's a lot of dirt in it, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm screening it. So there's Work out the dirt. Then I transfer the uh, clean pea gravel, <laughs> clean, still has a little bit of dust on it, no big deal, into, you know, a container. I got a couple wheelbarrows full here that I can work from to fill this in. You know, my, my trench is, is, you know, foot wide and a foot tall, and so I need four plus feet uh, to wrap it, you know, the, the width of the filter fabric. And what I have here is a eight and a half by seven and a half inch square. So I'm going to cut it this away. The next piece is going to go on top of the end here for my overlap. I'm also using bricks to try to pin this stuff up. Just dropping it down in there. And then as you pour the gravel in, you can make adjustments 
to the, the felt. You know, this is a, a fairly tight curve for a double wall pipe. I'm trying to get that junction coupled, right? So I'm using that brick to hold it lined up. And then I'm using the shovels to put tension on it to uh, uh, put a little curve in it, help line it up. And I'm going to whack on the other end with a brick. <laughs> Hot damn, looks like it did something. I'm going to review the footage, see if it actually moved. So I put a little piece of filter cloth over the junction, just keep that safe. And I've decided I'm going to rear load it here. <laughs> so since I have a ton of rock, I'm going to put a ton of rock in here. Ugh. I don't know if, if it's possible to get any of the excess fabric out. I will. <laughs> Alright, not so much. So what I'm working on today is I'm going to tie in the new uh, corrugated 4 inch into the existing PVC perforated. And, you know, they're about the same size. One option, <laughs> you know, if I wouldn't go into 4 inch and going into 3 inch, uh, you know, the 3 inch coupler fits real snugly inside the 4 inch perforated. And, and that would work. There'd be a bit of a reduction. But the other option is, uh, see these regular couplers? They fit okay, you know? So I'm just gonna cram that on, drill some holes to hold it in place. You know, they also have, uh, I don't know, <laughs> reducers. Yeah, you know, so this is an adapter to go from PVC to, to DWV down to that skinny schedule 20 drain pipe that they have uh, so you know I don't know you could do you can do a few things but I'm, I'm just gonna stick like this I, I drove all over town went everywhere trying to find the actual you know uh, uh, coupler that they have for this you know because you got a, a rubber boot a little bit bigger on one side than the other because it's hard to cram it in there but you know whatever this is gonna work you know this is so flimsy you know, when it's connected here, it's strong. And over here, at least it won't be able to crush to the point of, you know, going away. <laughs> Whatever. This particular material came from a, it was scrap on some big job, and the dude gave it to me. Which is nice, but the sock is in bad shape, so it's hard to cut. It just tears. You know, <laughs> I don't know if there's... Any point in even having such a rotten sock on here, but I'm gonna try to leave it. But these are easy enough to cut with your razor blade. You now, find a slot. I'm trying to get this cut to be fairly square. And there we go. Alright, well we're down here in the catacombs. You can see the groundwater. <laughs> it's uh, pretty high, isn't it? I pumped it out yesterday, but it's come back up just about that far. Right over here, I got this sock on my perforated PVC 90. Yeah, 90s are probably a terrible thing to have underground because I don't know how you're supposed to get it. <laughs> you know, if it ever clogs up, clean it out. But that's what we got. I'm gonna slip this on. That'll be, that'll be that. Huh? Huh? That's what I'm gonna screw it. Keep it, keep it in place while I get it buried. I've never called these catacombs before this video. But being down here in the catacombs is a little bit tight. So I'm gonna start one on this back side. I think we're on there. Oh my god, I got a drill bit with a tip missing. What's that work? <laughs> that was 
hopefully I drill it big enough I don't split anything with this screw. There we go. I'm going to do one more for good measure. Okay. I'll hold that in place. Oh no. I'm kind of thinking that this little sock, and so I'm using the pea gravel. The yeah, pea gravel has some pretty small rocks in it. It'll keep, it'll keep some of the little rocks from getting right into the grooves. But I don't think there's any way I can clog them all up. Yep. I got two. I have two kinds of rocks that I'm using. So there's this pea gravel, and if you look close. See, it's pretty contaminated, so I've been screening it. And then, uh, there's the beast. And then, like, the sewer, uh, leech-filled rock, French drain rock that we originally used. I pulled out a bunch <laughs> from, from down there in the catacombs. And, uh, I'm gonna try to go back with as much of this as I can. But also use <laughs> use up some of that pea gravel. I don't know. The, the bigger the void space in the rock, the faster the water can flow in theory. Uh, and maybe the longer it flows fast before it gets contaminated. But I'm hoping that with uh, you know going through the effort and the expense of using a proper non-woven geotextile like this, it'll it'll stay open for good. So you can see under the wall coming out around and over to the existing French drain. And the existing French drain actually drains right here. So that's why this has to be so high. Because right right under there, you see that white right there? That's the the drain point for this. So luckily we're downhill all the way over to this corner and then I'm going to prop that up a little bit and we'll be downhill to there and then we'll be downhill hill <laughs> to where it drains over here and all that's downhill to here. But there will always be some standing water in here when the ground is saturated but you know it is what it is. And I'm going to bury it to way up there above the catwalk. Ha ha! Look at this flying buttress. Fancy. Fancy. Retaining wall. Fancy, fancy. Uh, the Tower of Shame materials I've let go bad on me. Above ground openings are, are for closed uh, clean outs where you can clean it. So, so a, a, a closed So what we're trying to build today is a you know a long-term drainage solution that deals with groundwater.